Uh, Your Royal Highness, Excellencies and everyone, and obviously particularly Gunhild and Pedder, thank you very much. I come from a very dangerous country. It's us uh, who gave you the Industrial Revolution, and it's us who are at the moment disrupting uh, the great transformation in Europe. So I'm going to give some thoughts about uh, what used to be called England, but is really Brexit land. And I say England rather than the UK, uh, because it's exposed the tensions within Britain. Uh, we are uh, uh, an interesting country. We're the fifth or sixth richest in the world. We were the first to industrialize. We were the first to really do a long experiment, now 200 years, of not feeding our own people. Uh, because we were an imperial power. We used other people's land and food. If we look now, if we do a State of the Union for Britain, a bit like what Johan and Walt just did very elegantly, I could give you all the figures, but basically the bad news is we, like everyone else in the rich world, we're over-carbonized, we're damaging our ecosystems, our diet-related ill health is bankrupting our health service, people are fatter, it's been normalized, Non-communicable diseases are normalized. We eat all the time. I can't get into my local railway station without going past 34 eating opportunities. Uh, but only 15% of the population or about eat five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. It's very few. Almost no one is meeting the targets. It's a cheap labor system. And in economic terms, it's a food trade gap. 21 billion pounds worth of more food is imported to Britain than it exports. So this is Britain that says it's a trading nation. It actually doesn't trade its food. It just uses other people's lands and sells them whiskey and biscuits. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news, well, whiskey is nice for you, but it's not a great basis for food trade. The good news is we're living longer. We have a very, very efficient, in conventional terms, food industry, and we're rebuilding. We're moving from a country that was famous for brown food, everything was brown and boring, to more diverse. Last year we had Jamie Oliver, whom I know very well, and you know he symbolizes, to some extent, the resurgence of a very interesting culture. But if we summarize that, it's exactly what Johan and Walt said. We're not on the right track. We are an example. But we have some preconditions for change. We have a very powerful, noisy consumer movement. Science is very good. We're very good at the science. We collect bodies as they fall off cliffs very well. We invented epidemiology. But then the Brexit vote happened exactly 12 months ago. Narrow, 52-48. And the point of my story is, listen, all you rich countries, this can happen to you. This was the success of a political cult. This was the success of years of attacking what Gunhild was saying we have to do, teamwork, not nasty co uh, competition. Because actually what this was about was trying to break up the European Union. This may not matter to some of you, but it matters symbolically very greatly. Other countries now look at us in total amazement but actually what's happening is the destabilization of the attempt to try and get a better food system. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because it stops cross-border internationalism. It exposes our weaknesses. We have John Krebs, who was the former founding head of our Food Standards Agency, started nearly 20 years ago. It was seven floors of a building, it's now one. There's no state, it's a hollowed out state. In policy analysis, we call it that, the hollowed out state. It's exposed that basically when it comes to it, the powerful civil society movements in Britain, the wildlife who gave us the water directives, the bird directives, the habitat directives, all the civilizing of the common agricultural policy, the Brits are just leaving, unless you stop it. It's damaging our attempt to make Britain a more civilized food culture and to decarbonize. So what are we gonna do? Basically, I think it reopens the chance to put things right, because we had a hung parliament last week. Most people think this makes Britain even more of a joke. It is, but it isn't. And this is a very important opportunity. The agenda could be to reverse it. It means it's more likely. It means the chance for other countries to say, don't do this, work with us. 
These huge issues that Johan and Walt were talking about cannot be resolved by countries going alone. That is the lesson. That is what I am trying to put into your heads. Don't think this won't happen to you. It is already happening in your countries, these tendencies to go it alone. Don't let it happen. We need your help. There are big lessons here for academics like me, but number one is a philosophical issue. Progress is not a straight line. You have to expect ebbs and flows, forwards and backwards, things going wrong. And you won't survive those as a progress towards a better food system unless you've built a food movement. That's what this is about. So I say to the Eat Lancet audience here as well, the critical issue is that it means that we have to, exactly as Gunhild said, we have to make sure that even though we're talking about healthy diets and ecosystems, we have to put people absolutely at the center of that. And if we don't talk to consumers and educate them, for example, the British, if they leave and go into the WTO, they will now pay 22% more tariffs. 22%. No one told them that in the Brexit vote. So there are big, big lessons from Brexit land. And progress can easily be disrupted, but we can also reverse it. Thank you.